Thanks very much. And uh, it's fantastic to be back here today. And as I mentioned to you last night, I was Barnaby last night, but uh, today I'm actually going to be uh, Matt Canavan. But before, um, before I um, deliver Matt's speech for him, um, and he does send his very best wishes and sincere apologies that he's unable to be here today, um, can I just, um, just acknowledge the fact that it is International Women's Day, but most particularly um, acknowledge the fact that we have got some amazing women um, in agriculture. And I draw particular attention to Fiona Simpson, who's now the head of the NFF, um, our peak agricultural national body. Um, Michelle Allen, Dr Michelle Allen, who is the chair of our um, research and development corporations. But particularly, can I acknowledge that last night we had an amazing um, parade of, of extraordinary, successful and capable women who were awarded um, awards in the biosecurity and the science and innovation um, sectors, and, uh, and that uh, Dr Emily Remnant was the winner. Um, so it's absolutely fantastic on last night on the eve of International Women's Day to have been there celebrating so many fantastic women's achievements in agriculture. But my apologies for being late, but I actually um, had to do, uh, had pre-promised to do an interview on, uh, on ABC about International Women's Day. And for those of you who don't realise, today we actually don't have any presenters or any front of face from the ABC apart from women. And you'd be pleased to know the first question I got was, what did I think of that idea? You'd be pleased to know that I didn't tell the public uh, out there in Radio Land what I thought of that idea. I was very circumspect and said that uh, I thought that there were very many great women presenters on the ABC. But uh, luckily for us, it means that you're able to be here today. So all the, all the I, good I ABC men, <laughs> all the good ABC BC men are out there doing some really good stuff too. So um, thank you very much. So on behalf of Matt Canavan, um, not that I usually read speeches, but because this is Matt's speech, you'll have to excuse me and let me do so. But um, um, so first of all, I'd like to start by conveying my ministerial colleague's uh, apologies, who's unable to be here today. Um, but obviously, I'm equally delighted to be here on his behalf. It was interesting in reading the speech before I, uh, I gave it. Um, he actually wants me to um, make mention almost entirely of Northern Australia. I thought that was somewhat ironic, given that I come from South Australia. <laughs> but, <laughs> but nonetheless, um, today I'm going to talk about the government's agenda for Northern Australia, and in particular, what we as a government see um, is the region's untapped agricultural potential. So Australia is obviously um, among one of the world's greatest agricultural, mining and energy producers. We have a highly educated workforce, one of the world's most open and varied economies and an extensive services sector. It's estimated this financial year Australian agricultural production will top $60 billion, um, which is around $45 billion of which will be exported. It's also estimated uh, that Australian agriculture will feed 60 million people around the world each year and growing. These are great numbers, um, but we can make an even greater contribution. So despite being only 1.3 million people, about 5.5% of Australia's population, Northern Australia contributes 8.7% to Australia's GDP. The region's thriving and diverse exports in minerals, energy, agriculture and tourism, therefore, are a significant component of Australia's prospering economy. As an example, the earnings from the Pilbara alone are larger than the individual economies of 119 countries, but are generated by just 60,000 people. And while that's mainly due to iron ore exports, Northern Australia has also considerable agricultural strengths. For example, it's the, the world's fifth largest beef and sugar exporter. It's 12 million cattle and 3,000 sugar farmers bring in more than $3 billion a year. But we're still only scratching the surface, only realising a fraction of the region's enormous economic um, agricultural potential. The, oil, the ready availability of water is a major economic driver, particularly for industries in the north like tourism, mining, energy and agriculture. Northern Australia receives more than 60% of Australia's rainfall, but we only use around 2% of it. It's an unrealised resource and there's a convincing argument for better utilisation. As always, it comes down to a matter of infrastructure. And that brings me to the white paper on developing Northern Australia. Released in 2015, it's the first comprehensive look at growth opportunities in the North and the first all-encompassing long-term strategy to unlock these opportunities. 
It's complemented by the Agricultural Competitiveness White Paper, also released in 2015, and I'm sure you're well acquainted with that particular paper, particularly given that Barnaby Joyce opened your conference yesterday, and I don't think Barnaby's ever given a speech without referring to that paper. But the Northern Australian White Paper came with more than $6 billion worth of commitments to support business development growth in the region. Uh, I'll talk uh, more detail shortly about a couple of the cornerstone initiatives, like the $5 billion Northern Australia Infrastructure Facility, um, other infrastructure investments, and the recently launched Cooperative Research Centre for Developing Northern Australia. We're building the roads and we're on track to facilitate the major economic infrastructure that's needed. But I want to re reiterate why we're doing it. The centre of gravity of the world economic growth is shifting to the Asia-Pacific region. By 2030, it's estimated that more than two-thirds of the world's middle class will be in Asia. The proportion of the world's population living in the tropical region is forecast to grow from 40% to 50% by 2050. The free trade agreements um, uh, alone uh, is, uh, sorry, the free trade agreements we secured with North Asia give Australian exporters a competitive advantage in some of the world's largest markets. For example, China alone is forecast to account for almost half of global growth in demand for agricultural products by 2050. So our, uh, our China-Australia Free Trade Agreements, which remove Chinese tariffs on a wide range of Australian products, um, including agricultural products, were great news for Australia. Opportunities in Asia exist across sectors such as resources and energy, agribusiness and food, manufacturing, technology, services and tourism. Strengthening access to our regional and international supply chains will create significant new opportunities. The North's proximity to the Asia-Pacific region means unprecedented opportunities for developing the resources, the connections and the land, skills and institutions needed in this region and to make a valuable contribution to our Australian national economy. It also means that the North has emerged as a trade gateway for all Australia, shipping around 55 per cent of Australia's exports. A major development back in 2004 was the opening of the Darwin-Adelaide rail line. This led to a 13-fold increase in export volumes through the Pelt of Darwin over the last 10 years as shippers capitalised on the shorter sailing times from Darwin to the Asia-Pacific markets. The increase in global demand for food and natural fibre and the North's proximity to growing Asian markets means it's poised to grow the economic yield by expanding agricultural production. Key food and agricultural sectors that have potential to increase their exports from Northern Australia include beef production and processing, with the 12 million cattle in Northern Australia representing about 45 per cent of the entire national herd, horticulture and irrigated cropping, with potential for new broadacre crops at world scale production levels, aquaculture and commercial fishing, with fisheries production valued at around 404 million in 2011-12, and crocodile production and processing, with the North already turning out 10% of the world's crocodile meats and skins. There are many growth opportunities for other products currently grown in Northern Australia, such as a variety of fruit, nuts, vegetables and fibres. Specifically, the government is committed to increasing agricultural productivity in the North through increased yields, bringing on new productive land and crops, using new technologies, innovation and research, and utilising the area's huge rainfall. However, building water infrastructure and knowing how much water is available is essential to increasing agricultural productivity and sustainability. CSIRO research estimates that on average 2 million gigalitres of water arrives in the north, and around 15,000 gigalitres could be made available for additional agriculture. This is enough water to irrigate almost 1.5 million hectares, increasing Australia's irrigated agriculture by up to as much as 50 per cent. Nationally, the government's currently funding 39 water infrastructure feasibility studies under the National Water Infrastructure Development Fund. 15 of these studies, totaling $25.5 million, are in Northern Australia, with three in Western Australia, two in the Northern Territory and 10 in Queensland. These studies are essential parts of planning for more water investments. Uh, this includes the, the, the Lakelands Irrigation Project, the Nullinga Dam near Cairns, the Hillsgate Dam and Burdekin Falls Dam's wall raising near Townsville and the Urana Dam. They also include exporting water development in, options in the Northern Territory and raising the Lake Argyle Spillway to expand the Ord River Scheme and development of irrigated agriculture on the Keep River Plain. 
In addition, we've provided a further $15 million to CSIRO to lead work on foundational land and water resource assessments in the Mitchell River catchment in Queensland, in the Fitzroy River catchment in Western Australia and in the Darwin region. The following assessments completed on northern Queensland's Flinders and Gilbert rivers um, in 2014. We're also investing a further $174 million in specific water projects in the north. The government is delivering on its 2016 election commitment of $130 million to co-fund building of the Rookwood Weir on the Fitzroy River. This project could kickstart an agricultural boom in central Queensland in a water catchment that is second only to the Murray-Darling Basin. Additionally, agricultural innovation technologies that allow producers to monitor crops, soils and animals, manage information and readily access data for on-farm decision making could transform how agriculture is carried out in the north. Agricultural innovation is not confined to new ways of running existing enterprises. It extends to the potential of new enterprises in regions such as aquaculture. The North plays an important role too in the security of Australia as a whole. Here in Australia, we're renowned for the quality and safety of our food products and our reliability as a trading partner. Our strong credentials create a special competitive advantage when we are targeting existing growing and premium markets. They reinforce the competitiveness of our produce overseas, meaning Australian food producers and businesses can achieve higher returns for their products. The over 10,000 kilometres of northern coastline is the potential frontline entry point for many risk, high-risk animal and plant pests and diseases which can damage Australian agriculture and the good standing of our agricultural exports. The North's proximity to our international neighbours, extensive coastline and sparse population makes it particularly vulnerable to biosecurity threat. Most biosecurity outbreaks in the past 10 years have occurred in the North. The growth in agriculture, mining, tourism, alongside greater flows of goods and people into the North adds to the biosecurity threat, creating new pathways for pest and disease incursion. We have very little information about tropical diseases in the north in comparison to our information about the south. As more critical threats emerge on our doorstep, including foot and mouth, we need to closely cooperate with our neighbours to arrest biosecurity risks before they arrive. This means working closely and sharing biosecurity expertise with scientists and officials in places such as Papua New Guinea, Indonesia and Temelesti. A clean, safe and biosecure northern border Prevent, benefits all of Australia and is a major factor in our country exporting around $40 billion worth of produce around the world. This commitment is critical to the global economy and will future, uh, protect future northern investment in Australian industry. At the same time, we need to work on increasing our expertise, technology and commercialisation opportunities in relevant tropical markets, maintaining a clean, green and healthy brand. Last month, the government announced the composition of the establishment uh, board for the Cooperative Research Centre for Developing Northern Australia. The CRC will bring together industry, research organisations, all northern jurisdictions and international partners to tackle barriers facing private investment in the north. While the CRC will be headquartered in Townsville, it will work right across the northern part of Australia. Its initial focus will be on agriculture, food and tropical health. The government also called for applications for short-term collaborative research projects that will improve the competitiveness of northern industries. The funding round will provide um, up to $3 million over terms of up to three years for projects which address industry issues in tropical health and medicine or tropical and northern agriculture, including animal and plant improvement and sustainability. The project will kickstart the CRC's important work to deliver real-world outcomes and commercial opportunities for industries in northern Australia. Uh, I've already mentioned uh, the opportunities to build on benefits derived from our proximity to Asia and our major trading partners, maximising the use of our free trade agreements and in increasing infrastructure to support our industry producers and exports. We're working hard with our state and territory counterparts to address some of the other infrastructure deficits that will be central to realising the North's potential, especially the need for high quality roads. The $600 million Northern Australia Roads Program is building the region's transport network to support economic development and improve safety for all road users. 
These road projects include key freight routes linking important inland resources and agricultural areas with ports, with upgrades to the Barclay, Flinders and Capricornia highways in Queensland, and work establishing Queensland's Hahn Highway as a more reliable inland route from Cairns to Melbourne. We're also continuing to work on sealing the Outback Way that provides an east-west link from Queensland to Laverton in Western Australia. It will transform the north and uh, provide significant qualities of freight travelling by road across the whole of the north towards our other CBD destinations. The $5 billion Northern Australia Infrastructure Facility will provide concessional loans for backbone economic infrastructure across the north and its cornerstone of the Northern um, Australia White Paper. It's designed to encourage and complement private sector investment in the north. The NAIF's expert independent board is responsible for determining eligibility of projects under the NAIF in accordance with the NAIF investment mandate. So far, we've received 100 inquiries about project funding with more than 47 active inquiries across the north of Australia. Uh, the NAIF was established with a view to including support for developments like investment in airports, communication, energy, seaports, rail and water. All provide opportunities for agricultural sector to gain access to supply chains that will assist in increasing export opportunities, including high quality, high value goods to Asia. A major issue for development of Northern Australia is common to all prospective industry groups, and that is the demand for workers. Business in the North require an adaptable and mobile labour force with a range of skills, from engineers to fruit pickers, welders, me medical specialists and managerial staff. However, the North is hampered by localised worker shortages and a number of great challenges. High wage costs deter investment. Future growth in the North will require the ability to retain workers and better match their skills to needs, combined with better use of capital and natural assets. Key industries in the North require flexible and mobile labour, but are regularly faced with shortages of workers. Some businesses effectively shut down or reduce staff during the wet season, for example, as tourist numbers ease. Other industries, like mining and agriculture, require workers on site. Often this means the workers are in difficult conditions, away from families and without conveniences like shopping malls, medical facilities, services, entertainment and sporting facilities. Sounds like most of us who live in the country, doesn't it? Um, further challenges arise from the vulnerability of workers to boom and bust economic conditions, particularly given the large weight of construction in the northern economy. The movement of labour to and within the north also faces significant personal and financial barriers. Um, these include re relocation costs, infrastructure matters and services, family and community ties, and have been identified by the Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry as being one of the top 10 constraints of investment in Australia. To address specific regional needs, we've committed another $60 million in two targeted jobs and growth packages to deliver in Cairns and the Bowen Basin. These will help diversify these regions' economies, create local jobs, grow skills and the local workforce. The Northern Australian White Paper also identifies the need to ensure adequate Indigenous engagement in development, including creating employment opportunities. Northern Australia is home to 30 per cent of Australia's Indigenous population and they are already a source of locally based and interested workers. Developing the North must therefore also include employment opportunities for Indigenous Australians. Among strategies to achieve this are setting minimum participation requirements for contracts like road projects, helping to build employment opportunities and supplier use by some of Australia's largest companies. The government is supporting a number of land tenure pilots that broaden economic activity on land and demonstrate the benefit of reform to investors, Indigenous people and other stakeholders. We've also invested $12.4 million towards Indigenous ranger programs to carry out biosecurity work across the north. This work is ensuring Australia's quarantine ratings are maintained, protecting our industries and providing further jobs. A prime example of Indigenous engagement has been the West Arnhem Land Fire Abatement Project, co-funded by the ConocoPhillips. This use uh, uses skilled Indigenous fire managers in the fire-prone tropical savannas to work with the community on reducing greenhouse gas emissions, protecting culture and diversity. It's offsetting some of the greenhouse gas emissions created uh, at its uh, Wickham Point LMG plant near Darwin. Other potential opportunities lie in areas like biofuel production in conjunction with Indigenous landowners to meet the more enormous growth in the Asia-Pacific biofuel market. To sum up, Northern Australia is ripe for future agricultural expansion. 
The Northern Australia White Paper sets out a plan for the expansion of the North that is holistic, with future agricultural development occurring alongside economic development. The Australian Government is determined to build the right enabling infrastructure and support increased agricultural sustainability across the region. At the same time, we recognise the imperative of biosecurity and the challenges that are attached to this. We will work with the agricultural sector in the region to retain and gain access to markets across the economy to build a capable workforce. Thank you.